Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at and I'm gonna show you how to install the Max Fan Air Vent. This is gonna allow you to get that unwanted hot air up and out of your camper or your trailer at a faster rate than your stock fan. This is gonna be a great option if you're wanting to replace a vent on your trailer that doesn't have a fan and you're wanting to get more circulation or to replace a factory fan that might be smaller and you just want more airflow. This vent is gonna have some similar characteristics as your factory vent. You're gonna be able to pull down on this knob and then turn it to open up the vent to release that hot air. Whether it's open or closed, you do have the ability to lock this knob so that the lid is going to be stationary in the open or closed position. You just push it up to lock it in place. On our control panel is gonna be one of our differences from your factory fan or vent. It's gonna have a plus and minus for your speed control. It's gonna have an in and out, so if you wanna bring some fresh air in, it'll work just like a ceiling fan, and it'll have an out, so if you wanna take some of that stagnant hot air and blow it out, you can do that. And over here, I like this feature a lot. It's an auto feature, so if you push auto, it'll regulate the temperature. If it's hotter than 78 degrees, the fan's gonna kick on. And if it gets below 78 degrees, the fan will stop running. Now we can go ahead and turn our fan on just to show you how it works. Push the on off button until you hear that beep. This fan is gonna be extremely quiet compared to those factory fans and we can bump up the speed. Now, I am wearing a microphone, but I can tell you it's extremely quiet. This fan is gonna have 10 different speeds, so depending on what your situation is, you're gonna be able to regulate that. If your trailer's getting hotter, you're gonna be able to bump it up to the 10th speed to really crank some of that hot air out. But if you're just wanting a little bit of a breeze, you can put it in the in position and just turn it on low. One nice thing about this fan is it's going to have a nice flush mount design, so you're not going to have to worry about it coming down in your trailer at all. It's also going to have a screen over the fan that's very, very easily removable. You just turn these knobs. and remove the vent. And then you can just clean it out, maybe dust off your fins and replace it. A couple of notes about power. We're running our fan off a standard 12 volt battery on the front of our cargo trailer and it's working great. You will wanna make sure that you have some way to charge that battery because eventually it will use it up. This fan is gonna need to pull five amps, so just keep that in mind when plugging in your camper or your trailer. It's also going to need a 16 gauge wire to be able to run it to the power. That should be more than enough. And when it comes to solar power, your fan is still going to have to be connected to some sort of power, whether it be a battery or a plug-in. And then your solar panel is going to have to be strong enough to recharge that battery at the rate that your fan is using it. Now let's go ahead and go up on the roof and take a look at what the outside looks like. So here up on our roof, you can see what our fan vent is gonna look like. It's gonna have your intake right here on the side when it's in the propped up position. When you have it propped down, your vent will sit closer to the top of your trailer so that no rain or anything can get inside. This fan is gonna come available in two different colors. It'll, you'll have the white one like we have here which is gonna match any other white accessories that you have on the roof of your trailer or your RV. Or you can get the smoked color to be able to match the black accessories that are on the top of your RV. Here you see it in the open position. This is still going to protect the inside from rain, so you're gonna be able to have it open with the fan on while it's raining. Now we'll go ahead and close it and show you how low profile it is. See how it really shrinks down? It's gonna have a nice low profile look and only sit off your roof about five inches. 
Depending on what kind of roof supports you have in your trailer, you're gonna need to pick up the appropriate screws for that. The fan will come with wood screws if you have wood supports, but you're gonna need to pick up self tappers if you have metal roof supports. You're also gonna need a couple of tubes of self leveling sealing to seal out the outside edge. We do have kits available to get this fan installed here at eTrailer. Now that we've gone over some of those features, let's go ahead and show you how easy it is to get installed. So to begin our install of our new fan, we're gonna need to remove our old vent. We'll start by removing the four screws. Then you just pull your old vent down now we can move to the roof to remove the rest of it. To remove our factory vent, we're gonna to need to start by scraping off the old caulk. So we'll do that now. There's gonna be screws around the outside of your factory vent. So that's what you need to access. We found one here, so we'll keep going around the perimeter until we find all the screws. Now that we've exposed all the screws around the perimeter, we can start removing them. Now you'll notice once you get all your screws out, you're still not going to be able to lift the vent off. So you may have to get your putty knife underneath the outside rail and separate that sealant from the bottom of the vent. Now once you have that seal broken underneath the pan, you should be able to lift your old vent right off. You're gonna to wanna to try to get the area as clean as possible so that the new fan goes in very easily and seals correctly. Now if you're installing this fan in a spot on your roof where there isn't an existing hole, you're gonna to have to cut a 14 by 14 inch square hole. You're gonna to wanna to try to hit two roof supports just so that the fan is sturdy. Now we're gonna take our flange that's gonna go on our roof and install butyl tape on the bottom. We do sell this here at eTrailer so that it seals up the bottom when we put this on our roof. You wanna, we have one strip here. You wanna peel it back a little bit and put it over top of the corner Stretch it all the way out and push it down to secure it. And you'll do this all the way around the perimeter. Now that we've got all our butyl tape in place, we can go ahead and put it in place on our roof. And when setting this in place on your roof, you wanna make sure that these two metal brackets that are meant to accept the screws for the fan itself are on either side of the trailer, not front to back. Go ahead and peel our tape off. Carefully set it in place. Now you want to apply pressure all the way around to get that butyl tape to stick down. Now in order to get your flange in place secured onto your roof, they do include wood screws if you're going into wooden roof supports, but we're going to use self-tapping screws because we're going into metal roof supports. I will go ahead and take our self-tapping screws, screw it into our frame. You want to be careful when tightening these down because you don't want to break this plastic flange. So when installing your new fan, you'll want to open it up so that you're going to have access to the screw holes on the side. Take your wiring, drop it down in the hole, and set it down into place. Now we can go ahead and put our screws in the side. They're gonna be your shorter, larger head screws in your packet of included screws. We're using a manual screwdriver so that we don't risk damaging any of the plastic. And just screw it in until it's tight. So what you'll need to do when you get on the inside of your trailer to hook up your power 
is find a constant power source. We have a light switch here on the wall, so we followed our yellow wire back up, found it up here so that we can get constant power to the fan. Then you'll follow our line, and it leads over to the power on our fan. We connected it with a heat shrink butt connector so that we ensure that there's no corrosion that can get to this connection. Then we took our ground wire and ran it out and grounded it right here on our frame. If you don't have metal roof supports, you'll have to run it either to the negative terminal on the battery or down to the frame of the trailer. To get our flange in on the inside, you wanna hold your wires up and out of the way. Insert your flange. Now what we'll need to do is we're gonna to have to mark the outside edge of where it'll make contact with our side rail on our roof support. So we'll make a mark right there and then take it outside and make our cut. Now we're gonna take a Dremel and cut the excess off the bottom. Now that we have our flange trimmed down, go ahead and slide it up into place. Included are a set of four wood screws with white heads on them that are meant to go on the inside so that you can't see them. We're gonna to have to use self tappers because we're screwing it into a metal frame. Now you will have to cut either a little slip in your flange here on the side for the wires to fit through, or you can just run your wires on the outside like we did. Now let's test it out before we go up and seal up the roof. We'll push the on off button to turn it on. We'll bump up the speed. All right, now that everything's working, we'll head up to the roof and put our sealant on. Now before you seal up the edge, you wanna take a knife and cut off the extra sealant that is underneath our lip here. This will make for a better seal when you apply the sealant. When you apply this sealant, you're gonna to wanna to put a bead right at the intersection of the flat plate here and the top of your roof. And then we'll put one more on top of our plate and on the bottom. So it'll, all three of those beads will connect. And once you have all your sealant in place, go ahead and peel off the protective tape. I like to leave it on as long as I can, just so that your top of your fan stays nice and clean. You will wanna let the sealant dry for 24 to 48 hours before taking it outside. Well guys, that's gonna do it for our install of the Max Fan Deluxe.